Standard of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. Lady in Distress, another adventure of George Valentine. Personal notice, dangerous my stock and trade. If the odds against you are so great you know you're headed for a dead end, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Dear Mr. Valentine, what I'm up against is something you can't put in so many words. But you gotta believe me, it's got me scared out of my skin. I'm just another showgirl getting her first real break. But I'm afraid it's gonna be my neck. Maybe you can help me. But, but I've, gotta... I've gotta see you today. After that, it may be too late to do any good. Signed, Vivian Drake. Yeah. Yeah, that's my letter. But you're not Mr. Valentine. <laughs> I'm not even Mrs. Valentine. Yet. But I, I don't understand. Well, I'm Miss Brooks, his assistant. I make these lightning appearances when the great man is among the missing. I thought maybe I could help you. What could you do? I gotta talk to him, and it's something that can't wait. Well, Mr. Valentine's on a case that's taken him to Seattle. He'll probably be gone the whole weekend. I guess that washes me up. Just what did that letter of yours mean? Well, you see, I... I happen to have a brother. <laughs> well, you'd be surprised how many people do. Yeah, but not a crazy kid brother like I got. He's got himself into a mess and me along with him. Yes. Well, I'm not a very good singer. Not too good a dancer either. As for looks... You'll do. But where's the connection? I'm coming to that. It was only my looks that got me a job in Julia's nightclub in Des Moines. It didn't matter whether I could sing or dance because it's really just a racketeer's joint with a floor show as a cover-up. Mm-hmm. Well, what brings you here? Yeah. Well, that's the whole point. I don't understand it. I was off at the top spot in a show at the Peacock Lounge. And you're not that good. And something else. Julia, who runs the place in Des Moines, got a grand to see that I came here to take this job. Why? Can't you see? I'm being worked into some kind of a deal where I'm going to end up as a patsy. I know it, but there's nothing I can do. Well, I'm sure you had occasion to say no before. Yeah, lots of times. But not to a heel who can send my brother to jail. And I'm his payoff. It's as simple as that. Well, I think I get the picture. Tell me, what do you know about your prospective employers at the Peacock Lounge? Nothing yet. I've been sitting around trying to get up enough courage to go there and find out what they got lined up for me. I, I can't stall anymore. But my one hope was that Mr. Valentine might find out what this is all about. Oh, come on, honey. That's not going to help a bit. Tell me, who operates the Peacock Lounge? Do, you, do they know you? A couple of guys named Philip Geary and Glenn Cooley. They never laid eyes on me before. That's why I can't believe all this sudden interest in my talents. Then I could waltz in there and they wouldn't know the difference. Huh? It'd be perfect. I don't have any talents either. Would you? Oh, but you don't know what you're walking into. I can't let you. Uh, huh? It's about time you came to the phone. Yeah. Yeah, she fell for it. I did everything but sing Mother McCree. But the frame is on. Pardon me, friend. Yeah, what? Uh, hey, what's the matter? Don't you feel well? In a few minutes, I have to get back on train. Get to Seattle. So do I, but it looks like you'd better stick here in Farmington, fella. See a doctor. As it is, you can hardly move. I know. Pain across my chest. It hits me like this sometimes. All I need is... Yeah, yeah, what? That, that drugstore across the tracks. Take this, please. Buy me a bottle of Alcoid. Always helps me. Well, yeah, sure, anything. But look, I, I don't want this train to pull out and leave me in this break. It just takes a second. Believe me, you've got plenty of time. I know. Well, every drugstore carries it. Hurry, please. Okay. Better lean against this wall. Stay that way. I'll be right back. Look, Pop, I don't know how you spell it. I only know how to say it. Alcoid. Alcoid. Yeah, so you said. Funny, never heard of it. 
You say your friend is ailing in the chest? That's right. Now, I could make up something with a little... Of that, that... Yeah, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. There goes my train. Oh, Valentine, the good Samaritan. Hey, station master. Yes, sir? When is there going to be another train out of here for Seattle? 8, 10 in the morning. Oh, great. Do you want to know of a good hotel? Hey, just a minute. Yeah. Do you remember a short, stocky guy leaning against the wall here, right here? He wasn't feeling so hot? Sure, I noticed him, but I wouldn't say there was anything wrong with him. What do you mean? Did you go over him with a stethoscope? <laughs> no, but uh, you should have seen him streak after that train when it started to pull out. Riley speaking. Hello, Lieutenant. This is Valentine. Well, well. Say, pal, you'd better get down to town, and I mean pronto. What are you talking about? Well, I met your girlfriend. She's cutting capers out of school. She took some nightclub thrush under her wing, a dame in a hotel on Marlboro Street. Wait a minute. Let's have that again, Riley, and translate it as you go along. Private investigators don't peach on their clients, Miss Brooks informed me, so I don't know the whole story. Riley, will you get to the point... Well, it seems that Miss Vivian Drake imagined she's in some kind of a mess, and the letter was urgent, and you were out of town, and there you are. Yeah, here I am, planted in Farmington, population 2,814, and I mean planted. Huh? Yeah. Someone was anxious to get me out of town, and then they made sure I got stranded here. Well, I'm working on a very interesting case, too. Would you like to hear about it? Stop horsing around, would you, Riley? I was on my way to Seattle to meet a client. Well, I just called up, and there ain't no such person. Okay, pal, let's play it straight. How do you figure it? You think Brooksy was sucked into some kind of a phony deal? If I can find a cab in this place, I'll be back in town to find out for myself. Could you tell me where I could find Mr. Geary or Mr. Cooley? Sure, honey. That table, on the side of the room. Hey, oh, gee, thanks. Don't hey, mention it, honey. Me? You know, this is the funniest thing. What's the matter? Is my slip showing? I just heard what you said to the hat check girl. Well, it wasn't supposed to be a secret. I mean, I was sitting at that very same table. Then I went to the potter room, and now I meet you going back to where I just came from. Imagine. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you picked the worst night if you want to see the boys. Everybody's They're here, expecting honey. someone, and they're going to be terribly busy. Oh, well, don't fret yourself, honey. I think I'm the one the boys are expecting. Vivian Drake? Oh, no, you couldn't be. Just couldn't be. Well, of course, my birth certificate could be wrong, but I... But I'm Chicky Larson. You want I should tear up telephone books and shower you with confetti? But for a whole year, I danced right next to Vivian at the Empire Club in Kansas City. Uh Uh-oh. When I heard the boys was going to give you the top spot in the show, I was so happy for you. And now you aren't you. Are you? Now, look, listen to me, kid. Vivian's sick. She sent me to take her place. But this is a big break for me. And I'll take care of Vivian, too. My real name is Mitzi Raymond. Now I'm all mixed up. Well, the point is, we have to stick together. We're all showgirls, aren't we? Yeah. Well, what the boys don't know won't hurt them. Well, I... That's fine. I knew you'd see it my way. Did you? Well, if you say so, I guess I do. <laughs> Here you certainly know how to pick them. How do you do it, man? Well, uh, let's say I have an eye for a talent, Glenn, and uh, you're the money man. Oh, she's going to go over great in the show. One look at her and you can see that. Uh, could you gentlemen stop talking about me in the third person? Poor little me is right here with you, remember? <laughs> Smart as a whip, too. Sure. You should hear Vivian sometimes, Glenn. She says things I don't even understand. Uh, Chicky, darling, I'm very fond of you. Don't make me wonder why. Huh? Oh, uh... Mr. Cooley. Yes, dear? May I make a suggestion? Of course. Anything. Well, why don't I sit on your lap now? Huh? Oh. oh. <laughs> you mustn't mind Glenn, Vivian. He just naturally admires talent, but he likes to do it up close. As I remember, there was some mention of a job for me. When do I start? Oh, we got a wonderful routine all set for you, honey, but... Uh... We won't start working on the new show until next week. But you've got nothing to worry about. We rented an elegant suite for you at the Remington Arms, as of today. And it's perfectly gorgeous. The dressing room has mirrors on the ceiling. I almost got a sprained neck. 
I'm all for rounding up some of the crowd and going over there right now. A celebration in your honor, Vivian. Let the champagne flow. <laughs> Gee, the USS Vivian, about to be launched. All right, Mr. Drake, maybe it was a coincidence that your letter came in when I happened to be out of town. But don't you think it was sort of a dirty trick to play on another girl, I was letting scared. her walk into a shuffle like that? Miss Brooks seemed to know what she was doing. And I didn't know where to turn. Okay, okay. You just stay put. I'll see what the score is with the Misters Geary and Cooley. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I can't miss things, last words. <laughs> come on, come on, answer. Never mind that. Huh? The call can wait until later. Artie. Quick, give me a hand with it. Yeah. Close the door. Yeah. Oh, boy, you're a lifesaver, Artie. He was headed for the Peacock Lounge. I just got in on a plane. Lucky I ran into Valentine like that. There was nobody in the hall. Uh, what'll we do with him? He's got to stay put till this deal's over. When's that going to be? I'm getting the jitters. It's on the griddle right this minute. We'll dump him in the closet and let him sleep through it. You heard me. Riley. Put Riley on the phone. What? what? Say that again. I'm not my usual bright self at the moment. All right. Let me have the number he left for me. What are you talking about, Riley? What happened to Brooksy? Well, you can speak freely. This is a private phone. Oh, you said that before you... All right. Remington Arms. That's me knocking on the door. I'll have the fingerprints checked in a minute. What do you say, Doc? When did it happen? Please, Miss Brooks, please try to control yourself, will you? You're not helping things any. I am trying, Lieutenant. May I come in? Huh? Just what's going on here? George! Oh, oh George! Oh, easy. Stop this, Angel. Hey, how am I going to suck somebody in the jaw if you hold me like this? Now, who's been pushing you around? I don't know what happened, George. That's the way it was when I came, too. I don't know whether I did it or not. All right, I... shut up, Brooksy. You're not making sense. Come on, Riley, let's have it. Well, the guy on the floor there with the letter opener in his back, that's Glenn Cooley. Yeah? Fingerprints belong to Miss Brooks, all right, Lieutenant. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, I can skip that then, Valentine. What's the rest of it? Look, uh, pal, why don't you wait till she pulls herself together and let her tell you, huh? I want it from you, Riley. Okay. Well, there was a party here tonight. Everybody else left except Miss Brooks and Cooley. And there he is. And I really don't know what happened. I'm sorry, Valentine. The next edition hits the street at six o'clock. It's going to have to read, We're Holding Miss Brooks on Suspicion of Murder. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Car owners, the big news of the month is the arrival of that new, improved Chevron Supreme gasoline. If you haven't tried new Chevron Supreme, what a motoring thrill you've got ahead of you. For today's high-compression engines, you can't buy a better gasoline. It's specially blended to give your car faster starts, faster warm-ups, extra pep in traffic, ping-free power on hills. And it's a premium quality gasoline that's climate-tailored. In any of the West's temperature and altitude zones, you can count on new Chevron Supreme to get the best out of your car. So wherever you live, wherever you drive, try this new motoring thrill tomorrow. Get a tank full of new Chevron Supreme at an independent Chevron gas station or a standard station where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Now back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. You find yourself highballing to Seattle to service a client. En route, you discover your client is the figment of somebody else's imagination. And in your absence, Brooksy takes on a case of her own. One thing leads to another, as the saying goes, and presto, a tableau of Brooksy and a dead man. 
performer charged with murder. If you're as allergic to being taken for a knothead as George Valentine is, you perceive something like this. <laughs> Look, if you don't sit on your emotions, Brooksy, I won't be able to help you. Now, come on, let me do the talking. Right, the reason you didn't know when the party broke up is that somebody slipped you a man-sized Mickey while you were making like Vivian Drake. Then suddenly I didn't know where I was or what was going on. Riley's going to put Geary, that cheeky girl, and the others under the lamp the first thing in the morning and sweat them. But suppose they all tell the same story. What story? That Cooley had been making a play for you all evening and you were straight-arming him. But that's true. Which makes it bad, Angel, bad. Because oh. people being people, they'll think just one thing. When he hung around after everybody left, slapping his wrist wasn't enough, they'll think. You had to let him have it. No. But I... I can't be sure. Not really sure. But, George, you don't hey, think... Brooksy, I'd let you stay right here for asking a question like that. I'm not very smart, am I? You just forget that in this combine, I'm vice president in charge of sticking his neck out. But let's look a few more of these unpleasant facts in the face. Vivian Drake's taken a powder, as she hasn't been taken for a ride. But, George... And there's no such place as Julio's in Des Moines. You don't have to say any more. In other words, they've got me right in the middle of the field for the crows to pick on. Brooksy, I'm drawing you diagrams like this to make you understand this is no time to fold up. You mean stop being feminine? Uh-huh. Okay. I'll start working on a beard right now. Good girl. Now, let's see. It's almost 5 a.m. I'd better get busy because we got a date for lunch today. Have we? Yeah. And you're not going to be eating it off of a tin plate. <laughs> Having fun? Hmm? Who are you? The name's Valentine. Valentine? I know you. You're a holiday. When everybody loves everybody else. <laughs> Will you be my Valentine, Valentine? <laughs> you must have a pull around here, sister. A whole nightclub to yourself. 5.30 in the morning. Bar and all. I'm Chickie Larson. Fiancee of Mr. Philip Geary. I think. Who gave you that shiner? Mr. Philip Geary. Where's he? Back there in his office. How'd you get in here anyway? I'm a second story man, sister. There's only one story here, so it was twice as easy. Sure, that's right. I don't get it. <laughs> Why did Geary paste you in the eye, Chickie? What's he sore about? My girl, Vivian Drake, who wasn't Vivian Drake, because I know Vivian Drake. I didn't tell Phil that she was Vivian Drake at all. Yeah. And then she went and killed Mr. Cool. How do you know that? Police called Phil and told him. We're all going to be questioned in the morning. Oh. I don't think my fiancé is a gentleman. I don't mind being socked in the eye. But do you know something? After the party, he wouldn't even take me home. He just shoved me in a cab. Oh, he's a real heel, Chickie. But let's uh, let's make some more nice talk, huh? Did uh, did you notice whether Geary went back into the Remington Arms after he put you in a cab? I didn't notice anything. I was too insulted. I didn't go home either. I came right here and waited for him. I guess I showed him. Oh, now take it easy. It's not that bad, Chickie. Or is it? Why don't you tell me? I bet Phil will never trust me again. After me not telling him about Vivian, I bet he'll even make me take out all the money he gave me to put in my safe deposit box. Money? What money? How much? Three thousand dollars. That's how much he trusts me. Hey, you trying to get something out of me? Oh, I wouldn't think of it, Chicky. I'm just trying to be your big brother. I have a brother already. I don't like him either because he's a man. It's the girl who pays and pays. Yeah, yeah, chicken. That's right. I just hope nothing happens to that nice Miss Brooks. That fat dodo coolie had it coming to him. Well, I got to talk to your fiancé. So you'd better get a piece of steak for that eye. Oh, no. It'd probably be from a bull. That's a man cow, and I hate all men. Who's that? What do you want? I've been looking all over for you, Buster. I didn't think you'd be at your club this time of morning. What I do or where I am is no business of yours, whoever you are. Now get out of here. What are you doing, Gary? Straightening out your accounts after what happened to Cooley last night? What? You could have done this before, you know. As long as you decided to get the money partner out of the way. Now you won't have to explain about the 30 grand you chipped him out of, will you? Even if you're a cop, I don't have to answer any questions. 
I've got a date with you in the morning. I'll have my lawyer along with me. No, Buster, I can't wait that long. Oh. Now, stay on your feet, Gary. I got no time to pick you up. Leave me alone. Now, listen, I'm Valentine. You arranged that Seattle junket, didn't you? I never heard of you. You had me slug, so I couldn't barge in on the little party you had all set to frame us Brooks. You're crazy. Who is she? What are you talking about? When the others left the Remington Arms, you stayed behind. Come on now, what's the fix? You're going to answer my questions if I have to stay here and change the shape of your face. Valentine, what are you trying to do? I'm working my head off trying to help you and Brooksy, and you go and nearly massacre Geary. If I didn't know a few unsavory things about him, he could have you thrown in the clink for assault and battery. There's more of the same for anyone else I think did this to Brooksy. Now, I want to see her. Oh, just like that, huh? Oh, ye gods, man. How far out on a limb do you think I can go for you? I want to see her, Riley. I can't give you a visitor's pass to the city jail good for all hours of the day and night. Honestly, I... Okay, okay. I know how you feel. I think I can swing it. I'm sure one smart cookie, Angel. The one person I want to help, I can't. Oh, you did what you could, darling. Oh, yeah, yeah. The only way I know how, it seems, with my fists. I can't use my head. I can't think beyond Geary. Everything stops right there. Now you'd better sit on your emotions. But, Brooksy, I couldn't get a thing out of him. And when he gets ringed around with a lot of high-class legal talent, it's going to be even worse. Uh, it may take months to get hold of the so-called Vivian Drake. And in the meantime, you'll have to sit the whole thing out right here. If I can't do any better than this. Well, it's not a bad cell. Southern exposure, the matron tells me. Hey, what's that you're trying to hide there, Brooks? Oh, oh it, it's nothing, George. Nothing, yeah, let me see, let me see. Well, uh... Oh, Brooksy. Oh, I guess I'm just a ham at heart. Why do you want to torture yourself like this? Oh, no, I asked the matron to get me the newspaper. I didn't get much of a play, did I? Only page two. George, why don't you go out and get some breakfast? And a little sleep wouldn't do you any harm either. I don't want to be a Pollyanna, but things will work out and... Oh, put that paper down and listen to me. Oh, no, but it's a wonderful paper, Angel. What? Yeah, beautiful, blessed paper. People don't realize the miracle of journalism, what you can learn by reading your daily newspaper intelligently, carefully. Uh-huh. Yes, Angel, you're so right. I think I got something. Hey, Taylor, turn key, lover boy. Let me out of here. What I'm trying to tell you, Geary, is that you're yellow. Lieutenant, did you have me brought down here just so Valentine could tell me that? Shut up and listen to him. Gee, if I got a head, I had a little too much last night. You'll live, Chicky. Geary, your scheme to get rid of Cooley was a thing of beauty. And in a way, it worked. What do you mean, in a way? Cooley gets buried tomorrow. Now, get the picture. A showgirl from out of town who means nothing to anybody kills a notorious wolf. Chances are she'll get off on a plea of self-defense. And Geary is in the clear with everything he fills from his partner. Now, that was the plan. How are you going to prove anything like that? I'm not going to bother. Because the whole thing happens to be immaterial, irrelevant, and has nothing to do with the flowers that bloom in the spring, Trello. Get to the point, will you? Not so loud, Lieutenant. My head. What head? You see, Geary, uh... after all your masterminding, the human factor crept in. Yeah, you lost your nerve and couldn't kill Cooley. Well, thank you. That leaves Miss Brooks on the spot, doesn't it? What about that? Let me go on with the character analysis. You're not only yellow, Geary, but you're a patsy. A fall guy. A grade A schnookle. Now, wait a minute. Somebody's making you jump through the hoop without you even knowing it. And using your own little maneuver to do it. Oh, that takes real brains, friend. Okay, okay. Who is this genius? Come on, Chicky. Stop holding your head and take a bow. You're talking to me, Mr. Valentine? In person. You produced a Vivian Drake, all right, but you got a brighter notion. Did I? Why not get somebody like Miss Brooks to pose as Vivian Drake? Then when Cooley went to his reward, it wouldn't be just another one of those things. There'd be all that extra publicity, and I'd be more than a little interested. You know I couldn't rest till I traced it down to Geary. Just a minute. Sure, then that 30 grand in your safe deposit box, Chicky, that would be yours for keeps. You can hold that innocent stare, sister. But you were far from innocent when you decided to go through with it anyway when Geary lost his nerve. You sneaked back and did things with that letter opener. Come on, Miss Larson. 
Say something. 5.30 this morning, when we were alone at the bar, you did everything to put me on the trail of Geary. But you also talked too much. You said, I just hope nothing happens to that nice Miss Brooks. Well? Chicky, you couldn't have known her name was Brooks. The first edition identifying her as such, the one I saw in her cell, didn't come out till 6 o'clock. You are gonna let that pass too, Miss Larson? All right. Ever since I can remember, I've played the wide-eyed, simpering idiot to please men. This once I almost fooled all of you. Men, I hate them. Go on, Angel. Let's see what's in the morning mail. Oh, but George. Yeah. For a while, darling, would you mind opening the mail? Mm. Right now, wielding a letter opener. Well, I have a crazy fear I'll go off looking for another Vivian Drake. Oh, how do you like that? Now, look, if you ever get into a jam like that again, Angel, I'm going to... Well, I'll... (sighs) Yes. Mm. Darling. Hand me the letter opener, boss. Where's that mail? When you start out in your car tomorrow morning, remember there's a new motoring thrill available at your standard station or your independent Chevron gas station. It's that great new Chevron Supreme gasoline. For today's high compression engines, you can't buy a better gasoline. Through constant research and road tests, new Chevron Supreme has been perfected to give your car its best performance. Faster starts, faster warm-ups, extra pep in traffic, and ping-free power on hills. This premium quality gasoline is climate tailored, too. Wherever you live in the West, wherever you drive, new Chevron Supreme gets the best out of your car. Try it tomorrow. Ask for it at independent Chevron gas stations and at standard stations, where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. Next week, when we catch up with George Valentine, we'll find him and Brooksy in a deserted doctor's office. Now, here's a book I'd like to curl up with. The Human Foot. It's Anatomy and Pathology. Darling, what are you doing? What are you scribbling? Brooksy, I have just verified a universal truth. Oh, goody. Mm -hmm. Every cause has an effect, and by the same token, vice versa. Oh, goody again. Or in other words, anybody who gets poisoned twice ought to drop dead at least once. Louvain. Yeah, Angel. He may be a mental marvel, but I won't buy that he's also a medical freak. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Francis Robinson as Claire. Wally Mayer appears as Lieutenant Riley. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Herbert Little Jr. and directed by Don Clark. Also heard in the cast were Gene Bates as Vivian. Harry Bartell as Geary, Virginia Gregg as Chicky, Leo Cleary as Cooley, and Joe Duvall as Artie. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.